So, for the last year or so, I've been doing these Instagram story mini lessons. And the point of those mini lessons were to try and spread a message and um, educate people on all things to do with uh, training, nutrition, and mindset, which is the areas that I specialize in. The problem is, I don't think Instagram is the right platform. When people are on Instagram, their attention is everywhere. Everybody's competing for the attention. When you're on YouTube, your attention is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do short little mini vlogs on YouTube with the message of training, nutrition and mindset embedded in. But I don't want it to be boring as fuck, so yeah. So on this platform, I'm gonna do a more relaxed vlog style kind of setup. I'm gonna give you some mini lessons as I used to do on Instagram. And I'm gonna give you some behind the scenes into my business, Bodies by Moose. And I'm just gonna give you some of my general bullshit daily goings on. Um, yeah, it's gonna be cool. So we've uh, got the old coffees and just about to go for a morning walk around the lake with uh, my girlfriend. I'm not gonna be one of those guys who hauls his misses out on YouTube or uh, social media for likes and followers and shit. So um, yeah, I'll show you the lake. We, we, we um, live in Doncaster right now and pretty shit, but the one nice place in Doncaster is the lake. So um, let me show you the lake. So morning walk uh, done. Um, I like those little walks around the lake. We do them a few times a week because it's just a, a cool way to start a day, especially today. I mean, it's cold. It was minus one this morning, but it's a fucking beautiful day. So you get some vitamin D, get some sunshine, start the day right. Um, yeah, and just have a nice little cute walk around the lake and look at the ducks. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that done. Um, got a busy day today, heading off to Exeter this afternoon. So it is now 10 o'clock here at the gym i'm gonna train legs so i'll take you guys with me to train legs and um then we are off to exeter so um yeah we've got a, a good leg session ahead so let's do it talk social media. A friend of mine put a post on Instagram this morning about counselling, put it up there, and um, it triggered some interesting responses from people. Uh, people were getting pretty emotionally reactive about what he was saying, twisting what he was saying, deliberately missing points. So it's not very often that I leave comments on social media because I just tend to not get involved, it's not my scene, 
But I took it upon myself to uh, leave a little bit of, little bit of a, a comment, leave my two pence in there, and um, just kind of set the record straight a little bit, you know? And it got me thinking, the way we use social media is fucked up, man. Um, so I wanted to just share a few words um, about my thoughts on social media, and hopefully it will help the way you approach social media if you um, find that it, it negatively impacts your mental state, you know? So um, here are my thoughts. Number one, social media, although it's, not an, it's neither a good nor bad thing, you know, it has its positives, it has its drawbacks, but first of all, social media, especially things like Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff like that, um, it's just noise. It's just everybody shouting, look at me, look at me, my dick's bigger than your dick. Nobody cares, you know? <laughs> Nobody cares. It's just noise. Um, essentially, it's everybody trying to shout over each other, everybody trying to get attention from each other, uh, everybody trying to get that little dopamine hit, that little reward mechanism in their brain when somebody likes their status or likes the post or shares it or retweets it, whatever the fuck it is nowadays, you know? So don't take it too seriously because everybody's just trying to get attention. It's, a, it's an attention game, right? Um, which is why I prefer YouTube, because although there's uh, just as many people on YouTube, when you are watching a video on YouTube, you are watching the video on YouTube, you're not bombarded by 17 other people in the same screen space saying, hey, look at me, look at me, right? So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just an attention thing, so don't take it too seriously. Number two is that um, social media is a highlight reel. When do you ever go on social media and see people sharing their worst and their darkest moments? Very rarely, right? People want to share that they got engaged, people want to share in the fitness space that they, they, they ran this marathon, or they, they hit this massive lift, or they want, to, they want to show their abs and the big pecs and the shoulders, or if you're a woman, they want to show their, uh, you know, their, their perfect fucking booty or glutes or whatever you call it, uh, and the flat stomach and all that kind of stuff. People show themselves at their best. And if you are feeling your worst and you go on to social media and you see everybody showing their best, it kind of leads you down this toxic thought pattern and this toxic mental attitude that you end up feeling like your worst is the equivalent to their best. And that's how things are all the time. You're always at your worst and they're always at their best. But that's not the case. There are many, many times that the people that you're looking at online feel exactly like you do. I promise you, because I've been on both sides of that, um, you know, equation there. And it's not all about apps, it's not all about fast cars, it's not all about what it looks like on social media. If you look a few layers deeper, even one layer deeper sometimes, uh, things aren't always as they appear. So remember to take everything you see on social media with a pinch of salt. And uh, yeah, just remember that it's all a highlight reel. It's just the best parts of people's lives that they want to project. What people are showing you isn't a true reflection of themselves. It's more of a reflection of what they want you to see. They're not sharing their darkest moments. They're sharing what the impression they want to leave you with. Saying like, say, hey, look at me, look at me, right? So it's just a highlight reel. Point number three about social media is emotional reactivity. So if you are feeling emotionally reactive, like the people I assume uh, were feeling this morning that were uh, attacking my friend for his, his what was quite a constructive post on mental health. Um, don't go on social media. If you're feeling it emotionally reactive, you are going to be triggered by the slightest thing. And you know this to be true, right? If you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, and if you are feeling like on the edge, like anxious, um, just feeling like anything can just set you off, social media will set you off and it will ruin your day. It has the potential to do that. It also has the potential to make your day because it's not a a living, breathing thing. It's just a thing, right? That humans use for one purpose or another. So don't go on social media when you're feeling emotionally reactive and you're feeling like you could, you're like a ticking time bomb, like you could go off at any moment. Don't go on social media when you feel like that. Instead, do something to make you less emotionally reactive and the lowest hanging fruit I can think of for that is meditation. So meditation is something I do most, well, mostly I do it every morning, obviously not every morning because I'm saying mostly, um, but it's something that I try to add into my morning routine as often as I can. Um, and essentially, the way I like to think of it is it's the ability to hit pause. So you do this first thing in the morning, as soon as you wake up, before you've had any breakfast, before you've done anything else. You go downstairs, 
you make yourself a coffee or whatever you drink of choice and um, you sit quietly and you be present in the present moment for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is all you need to do, okay? At least to start with. And what you do in there is you're just not looking for your phone, you're not thinking about anything and, and, and if you do think about it, it's fine, if you think about stuff, it's fine, you just notice the thought and then you return to the present moment. And the way you can return to the present moment, because that sounds a bit abstract and a bit hippie, a bit woo-woo, but the way you return to the present moment is by watching the breath, it's by feeling the body, it's by tuning into the senses. So sometimes you can sit there and you can just feel your breath in your body, you can feel your stomach and your lungs inflate and then deflate and you can just watch that for a while, right? And just focus and bring your attention fully to that. Because if your attention's fully on that and you're fully present, you can't possibly think about anything else. It's only when your attention drifts away from that that you can start thinking about something else. And that's, at least in the short term, a cure for anxiety and depression. Because anxiety is, by definition, living in the future. If you are anxious about something, you're worrying about something that is yet to happen and may never happen, right? And if you're depressed about something, you're depressed about something that has already happened. Depression, you, you can't be just depressed. You're depressed about a, a thing, a person, an event, and maybe a combination, or quite often a combination of those things. So meditation and, and bringing yourself into the present moment, bringing yourself here and now, living in the here and now, has far-reaching benefits, not just for emotional reactivity, but also for mental health issues like anxiety and depression. So I highly recommend you give that a try. Point number four is to detox your social media. So um, this is something that I've done lately. What I've done is the only social media that I um, have an account on right now is Facebook and Instagram. And um, Facebook hasn't really served me for a very long time. With Facebook, all I've been doing uh, is scrolling through the newsfeed. I've not been getting anything out of it. I've just been seeing everybody's bullshit, everybody's noise, everybody's dick measuring contests, everybody saying, look at me, look at me. And I've been wasting a hell of a lot of time, you know, I've not been productive at work, I've not been present with my uh, girlfriend or my friends or my family when I'm sitting with my mum, you know, I'm not been present with her because I'm just scrolling through Facebook, absolutely wasting my time. And what, was I get, what have I got out of it? Not very much. So what I did was I deleted the app for Facebook. Now, um, I've still got the Messenger app, so I can still get in touch with people and people can get in touch with me, but I'm just, I don't, I don't need to see. So if you are feeling a similar way about, in particular, Facebook, that's what I suggest you do, first of all. Now, for uh, the, the, the thing is, because I obviously run my own business, so I need Facebook for work. So I have a Pages Manager app, so uh, I can still post on Facebook um, and not have to see the news feed, okay? Now, for Instagram, that isn't the case. Instagram doesn't have a business version of the app. You have to have the Instagram app so um, there's no getting away from the fact that if I want to run a business online, I have to have the Instagram app. So the way I've got around that in terms of making sure that it doesn't um, steal too much of my attention is periodically, and I'm sorry to say periodically, I mean at least once a week, maybe twice a week, some days, some weeks. What I do is I go through my um, following section on Instagram, the people that I follow, and if they are not serving me in any way and I, I'm, I'm not drawn to their posts, I don't need to see what they're, what they're posting, I unfollow them. And it's not because I don't like them or because I don't care about them. And quite often, I, I, sometimes I unfollow people that I do care about and people that I do like. But what the reality is, if they are not serving me and if they, what they are putting out online is either making me feel bad or not impacting me whatsoever, then I don't need to see it. I don't need to... Um, have it on my newsfeed and what that's done is it's severely reduced the amount of people that I'm following on my personal Instagram um, and you know I, I think I'm only following about 130 people now which isn't very lot this isn't a lot you know because a lot of the people don't post um, and they're just friends and close family members and stuff like that so um, what that's done is it's cleared up my newsfeed so often even if I'm bored or you know I'm, I'm procrastinating from whatever task I'm doing I end up clicking onto Instagram, and if I'm doing it too frequently, then I'm seeing the same stuff I've just seen, right? So, it, 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 you know, intuitively, I'm like, I've just seen this stuff, so I click straight off it, and then I put my phone down, and I don't feel the need to go back on it. There's not, not, not any that fear of missing out that the programmers over at the social media companies uh, 
use so heavily to keep us coming back and make them advertising pounds and dollars, yeah? So that's, uh, that's one of the techniques and the hacks that I use for social media. But I strongly suggest that if you can't hack social media, if you can't deal with long periods on social media or going on social media too frequently, that you just take a, a complete break from it, a complete detox from it, um, change your relationship with your phone, change your relationship with social media in general, and yeah, just make sure that it's not negatively impacting you because why would you have something in your life for it's bringing you as negativity? And that's my sort of mantra. So that's the mini lesson for today. That's all I've got to share on that. So I hope that was useful and I'll speak to you very soon. Hey vlog, so let me show you two things. First of all, um, we've got what I've just bought my five-year-old nephew for his birthday. Um, well, he's four. He's gonna be five tomorrow. Um, this is what I bought him for his birthday. Now, bear in mind, he's five and he's fucking mad on anything space related, right? Anything astronaut or space or universe or um, space cool shit related, right? This is what I got him. Knowledge Encyclopedia of Space. I don't wanna give it him because I wanna read it. I just wanna fucking go balls deep on this motherfucker. Like, what, look at this. Random, random, first page of random, the universe. What the fuck is that? I don't know, but it looks cool as shit. That's what I got my nephew. The other thing I want to show you, as some of you may or may not know, I run a um, membership site called Bodies by Moose, where we teach people how to create stronger bodies, stronger minds, and um, eat, live, and train to the best of their capabilities. As part of that, we have an exercise database, which is a database of, let's say, about a hundred and... 20 videos, just over that, maybe 120 videos of every exercise you could possibly conceive of. Um, and I've just finished updating that. It was just videos. Now it's videos with um, commentary from me telling you exactly what you need to be looking out for and also a written text description of instructions for the exercise. So let me show you what this looks like here. Let me just turn this around a little bit. So this is just the one of the exercises here. So we've got cuff push down. So we've updated the thumbnail to be a nice... Uh, smooth screenshot of the exercise so you know what it's, what's going on with that. Uh, we've got commentary here, so I don't know if it's going to load quickly because my internet's a bit shite. Okay, guys, so this is there you go. Check that motherfucker out. And then we've got the video only. I won't play that one. Uh, and then we've got exercise instructions. Boom. That took me about two weeks. <laughs> that was such a ball like job. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, so. Um, now I'm going to um, meet up with my girlfriend. Uh, Exeter is not happening, which is actually a good thing. Um, uh, but we are going to go for some food and we're going to stay in a hotel tonight. So that would be cool. Um, yeah. So, just got to the hotel, gonna go get some food now, get some work done, and uh, spend a little bit of time with the missus. Um, yeah, I think that's probably enough uh, waffling on for one day, so that's the wrap of the first vlog, the first ever vlog that I've done. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully there was some useful stuff in there, or just, uh, you know, it was watchable. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do one of these every Monday and every Thursday, so uh, try and put some useful stuff in and amongst my bullshit waffling on um, and meanderings throughout the day. Um, so yeah, uh, next one will be Thursday and on Thursday we've got a Bodies by Moves podcast going out so you'll be able to see some behind the scenes through there. Um, so yeah, all good. Um, I'll see you soon.